Nokia Private Wireless provides ultra-reliable, secure connectivity that ensures full APOC operational and situational awareness to enhance efficiency, automation, and responses. Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Holly and I'm the editor of International Airport Review. And I'm joined here by Thomas Rayberg, who is Head of Segments for Aviation and Public Safety, and Richard Von Bake, who is Global Aviation and Public Safety Practice Lead, both from Nokia. So Thomas and Richard, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Today we are here to talk about how Nokia is helping airports to realise Airport 4.0 and what you can do with this technology to really get the most out of it. So perhaps we could start with pointing out that digital transformation is a journey, and we have seen airport 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and so on. So Thomas, perhaps it would be good for you to, to give us a snapshot on where we are as an airport sector on this journey or sliding scale. Yeah, thank you, Ollie. Maybe first, before we start, let's remind ourselves uh, what is really the meaning of these maturity levels, these numbers that you were just um, also listing. Yeah, well, <clears throat> what we call um, Airport 1.0, this was basically the start of it all. It was the days where anything was um, analog still. Huh? So you had to move yourself to the airport, and then as a passenger, you had to find your way at the airport. A lot of the things were done really in paper, based on paper. Hardly anything was available in an electronic form. This is where it all started. And we know how this was what was feeling in these days, right? Now, um, right after that, um, of course, that um, industry decided, we well, let's go more electronic and start with the passenger itself. So at uh, level number two, what was introduced um, predominantly was self-service capabilities for the passenger so that he could already get his ticket himself um, by moving himself to a ticket machine at the airport, not have to pile up uh, in front of the gate or the ticket counter any longer, and a lot of things that were attached to it. So the focus was starting for a good reason um, with the passenger. So to improve the passenger flow was the ultimate target. Started with Airport 2.0, continued with Airport 3.0 by just including more stakeholders. Um, but it was about the passenger. Now, Airport 4.0, that's something different. That's um, the full digitalization of all processes. And this definitely now, from now on, also includes operations. Because uh, you cannot just ignore operations and um, look only into the passenger experience um, as such. Um, airport 4.0 means a full digitalization of the airport processes. All airports that we know and that we are talking to are on their way. All are aspiring to reach Airport 4.0. However, we need also to honor different starting points. So there are some airports that uh, are there since a while. They have been modern, centuries back, I, would, I was about to say, decades back. But of course, they have a diff different starting point as if you would just compare to very new airports down in Middle East, in Asia, where they are just splendid and they have the honor for the late birth, I always say, they just skipped some of these levels and they could start with already maybe about 4.0. So we see them all on the way. Um, of course, COVID was slowing it out big time, but now also because of the pressure that is with them, right after COVID and the restart of the business, everyone is going there from a different starting point though. Yeah, so, so, so I think that's a very complete answer, Thomas. Um, so if I if I may, I mean, let me let me add a little bit of uh, of things as well. I mean, what also creates uh, an airport 4.0, apart from the operational aspects, uh, we also see clearly that in an in an airport 4.0 domain, the airports become more uh, business aware. Um, so whatever they do, they want to uh, actually um, uh, make money uh, out of um, out of an investment for, from a, for, for instance, from a network or uh, or a procurement of a, a particular asset, but also they really want to shave off costs uh, wherever they can, right? So, so uh, the financials is something that is becoming increasingly important along the route on the journey towards Airport 4.0. Similar aspects for sustainability. Of course, we all know um, how um, the world is looking at aviation. It's something for airports to very much keep in mind. Um, how can they be a more sustainable airport um, uh, in, in, in the future or now or in the future, right? So Airport 4.0 also addresses these aspects. 
um, uh, um, uh, for an airport, just as a as a bit of an add. -on. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to come back to that a bit later, aren't we? But um, it'd be great to hear then uh, which at, which airports you are actually working with at the moment. Yeah, we have these um, also public references that um, we always use in front of customers because these are the ones, frankly, that um, we have agreed to be able to talk about. The whole journey started in Helsinki, continued in Vienna. Then we have Brussels, which are really um, maybe the center of it all as we speak because they are really on it. They really understood what does it mean, um, uh, digitalization, and they are also by this playing a bit the example to others that are still on their way. Um, as said earlier, the starting point is different. COVID, however, hit them all, and uh, now they are coming uh, back strong, um, predominantly uh, in parts of the world where <clears throat> the airports also mm, now really have shown that the infrastructure is out aged. It is a critical infrastructure, though. Even the crisis had, had brought to the surface that we better take care about our airports. It was just there. It was given. We, we all we all understood. The airports are there for granted. No, they are not. You need to take care about those because they are part of your critical infrastructure in a country. Look to what is uh, what is happening in the U.S., where where billions of U.S. dollar are assigned for renewal, and there is really a must to do so. I'm not sure when you last time been in the U.S. You see it, yeah, and they have been brand new back in the days, uh, decades back. But now it's time to renew them, and they have the chance that now. If they go for it, they go for it in 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 into right into airport 4.0 with no further redo. Yeah, they they go there. Now we have a lot of airports talking to us. You may understand that we don't want to opening up here because yeah, they're also in competition, and we we are honoring this. But uh, believe me, after COVID, COVID is behind us, um, also the business is back, and Richard and I are quite busy on this yeah 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 I, I thanks a lot for this thomas I, I think it is worth to say i mean uh so thomas was highlighting uh, brussels helsinki and vienna airport uh but, but we have engagements ongoing in in uh probably all the regions um so that also includes for instance asia pacific and, and the us uh where um where airports definitely are um are looking a lot into um, further digitization of their uh, of their airport. I think that's important to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you mentioned, Thomas, that the um, US airports, they're jumping straight into airport 4.0. That's a huge undertaking. They must have a lot of work to do in that respect. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, and they are all knowing about it. I mean, however, what you also see in the US, typically these airports are pretty large. And a large airport is like like a city. Uh, it mm -hmm. comes with several layers of organization, several complexity, which is uh, just a consequence to this. So, um, and if you want to really go for airport 4.0, it has to involve a lot of stakeholders. You cannot just start uh, alone as a CIO. And also the CIO himself, he has clients. The, 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 the organization is basically his client. So he needs to also be able to take these people um, uh, with him. The good thing is now we have the technology. It's there since a couple of years, but from time to time, it also needs a bit of a time until industry recognizes the benefits of those technologies. And um, it's the right time to start now, right? We were hoping for this to be started a bit earlier than COVID came. Well, they had other things to do. They first had to survive. We understand that, but now we are here also to help them on the journey. Thank you. Um, now, I want to discuss um, the benefits that airports see to the, the passenger experience, revenues, operational efficiency, cost um, and environment. So could you give us an overview of that as well? Yeah, let's look a bit what happens in an uh, at an airport. We have uh, talked a lot about the passengers already, but there is another user group, which is operations. And we um, in our models, we always make a separation between the two for a reason, because today, um, when you when you look um, how connectivity is done, how communication is done at an airport, um, it is so that both of these user groups in a lot of cases have to use the same systems. And there is also a reason for it because that is the only, um, these systems are the only ones available if you want to use broadband services. To name them, 
wireless LAN and also public cell phone services. Now, this has its limits, of course. It works for a while, but um, as um, the airport has only limited influence on the level of quality, uh, the level of service, a public um, service provider uh, is able to also to realize at the airport, they just need to live what they have. And as both of these user groups are joining the same platforms, it can also be that um, they are impacting each other in the way they use it, right? So if you have a weather problem at the airport, then both user groups are busy at the same point in time. Everyone wants to call home, I'm late or uh, calling a business partner that he's not uh, able to join the meeting, whilst operations is pretty busy to keep uh, the airport operations running. So uh, one benefit is by just separating these two user groups from each other, by spending um, a new platform, with the, this is the idea of private wireless, in fact, a new broadband system for um, to give it to the airport operations people predominantly, not private people like you and I as a passenger, but the airport operations people, so that you have an alternative, instead of using public cell phone services, using your own broadband system that you can customize, that you can use purpose-built in terms of performance, coverage, throughput, and functionality, which is all a bit different as you if you compare to residential or private customers. This is the idea of private wireless behind. And if so, then you will see that you can introduce a new way of working in your airport operations by at the same time, making sure that your passengers are also not um, getting impacted from any kind of airport operations. So they will need their wireless LAN services. They want to call home via the public cell phone services as well. And both of these user groups will have systems that are made for them and not that are a compromise big time. Yeah, so if I can expand a little bit. Uh, um, so th th Thomas is perfectly right. Uh, but um, th let me also highlight a little bit all around, for instance, the costs uh, that are involved. Um, uh, one of the things that we uh, we actually saw while talking to many airports is that they, um, they are faced with um, quite considerable costs when it comes to connectivity. And it is completely independent whether it's at the terminal or at airside. Uh, at airside is even even sky high. Yeah? To run a fiber or to um, to run a CADEX cable at airside has a tremendous cost. Uh, not even talking about the um, the time it will take actually to uh, to provide that connectivity. Now with um, solutions that uh, Nokia is providing around private wireless, that headache is going to completely disappear. And we've seen airports shaving off hundreds of thousands of euros um, um, uh, from, their, from their, um, uh, their business planning over the next years, simply by implementing private wireless uh, and removing all the headaches around fiber and, and CATEX um, in their, uh, at their airport. So, so, that, so to, if, you, if we would talk about costs, that is a, that's already a very, uh, significant cost saver and can save cost from day one going forward, right? Uh, so I, I think that's important to uh, to recognize. And let me also highlight the revenue aspect of uh, of this. Since we're talking um, something completely different from um, from, for instance, Wi-Fi, uh, what uh, Thomas was highlighting. Wi-Fi is range limited for good reasons because it's operating in free spectrum. Uh, anyone can use it, so um, so it it can only cover so much uh, so much meters, right? Now with private wireless, the, you have a completely different ball game, right? Because you reach a lot further, meaning that the airport operator all of a sudden can reach their tenants away from the terminal, like for instance the cargo business, for instance um, logistics, the maintenance, repair, and overhaul uh, uh, hangers, and so forth, right? So there is a business case, a business opportunity around that fact, um, because they can start providing private secure services towards these tenants at their plot of land. 
and they can start monetizing that. And we've already seen examples by airport operators actually doing that with um, with the Nokia solution. So that is yet another benefit for uh, for airports to uh, uh, to embrace private wireless. Uh, just to add on the story that uh, that Thomas gave. Um, and what about environment? Can you say a few words about that sustainability? Yeah, I mean, maybe also to to give it another name, this private wireless, I always call it also the universal network, right? It's a universal wireless network where you can bring all kinds of applications to it once you are there. It helps you solving this issue that Richard just nicely explained about how can I cross the runway? I would have the need, but there is absolutely no business case. How can I do this? Or there is a camera needed at a certain point at the terminal where we know there is a blind spot, but we cannot afford the cost because that diamond fiber that we would need to go there is so costly. All these things you can easily solve with uh, private wireless um, uh, once once you have it. Now, also, this includes sensors, um, be it for noise, be it for pollution, be it for carbon emission, any kind. You can certainly use this as a layer for to get some additional ears and eyes for your operations that you can make use of. That's the idea of Airport 4.0, in fact, to get it all connected into one network. Once you have your assets, your people, your resources connected in one layer and private wireless is the ideal medium for this because of just by technology, yeah, because of his uh, his design, then you can start optimizing. Um, if you don't know what an asset is doing, it can be even a, gay, a gangway that you are in search for. So where to find it? Even at, uh, at an airport, some people are honest enough to tell us there are times where we don't know where all our gangways are. So or um, else noise. I mean, we know that some airlines maybe have a difficulties not to use the APU, that um, power generator that is inside the aircraft and because it's at the moment of time, a bit cheaper to use it instead of using ground power. However, it is noisy and it is not really ideal for the carbon footprint. Now, if you have um, sensors that you can connect uh, via this network, then uh, of course you are immediately spot this yeah? and you tell the pilot, please don't do it. I mean, please accept that we don't want to have it. Just as an example, These, um, there are so many things that today are not discovered and um, that also will um, show their value over time once the organization is learning about what to, what they can do with this organization, not with this um, with this technology, not to forget that the most of our processes as we see them today are also kind of a, an echo to the capabilities of the systems they are supposed to use today. All of what they have today is ah, narrow band, we call it in technical terms. It is voice based. It is not uh, at all the level of information you get as a private person where you can send videos where you can set all kinds of multimedia things. That's all not available, but this new technology um, will introduce this to the to the airport operations. Um, from a technology perspective, it is just simply a downscale um, of a technology that we are very much used to um, already if you look to nationwide networks. It's the same technology. The only difference is that we made sure in industry that we can scale this down and make it easy to operate for an airport so that the airport can act as his own service provider. That's the whole idea. And then he can even offer this to his tenants and look for additional revenues. He is his own service provider on his own network that he can customize to his needs. And that is on his spectrum that no one else is allowed to use, different to using wireless LAN for it. It's a free spectrum that everyone can use. Yes, it is cheap, but you cannot predict the performance. There is no way to predict this. And um, basically all airports try this first. It may or may not work depending on the morphology of the terminal also. But if you then as a ramp agent move yourself below the wing, we call it, and the whole coverage will be shielded by the wings, then you are out of coverage. And this does not happen by 
the private wireless technology because the technology is just designed for it. Fantastic, thank you. Um, now, how is this technology different to others? Yeah, it's a bit uh, more of what I was just starting with. So if we compare these two technologies, it is um, that um, this private wireless is exactly the technology that has been used since a while already for to supply whole nations uh, with a um, with a coverage as a true mobile network. Mobile network is something different as a wireless network. In technical terms, as engineers, we know the difference. It's a managed network which is organized from a network perspective, which is able to also make sure you have um, the throughput, the coverage, and also the handovers where you between the cells where you need them. Whilst a wireless LAN system, just to compare it with this um, alternative, the so-called alternative that every one of us knows because every PC has a wireless LAN uh, modem in it. This is what it says. It is a wireless LAN access. It is built for to use internet. It is not built for to do mission critical communication. You cannot absolutely rely on it. For internet, it may work for an internet lookup, but you better don't trust on or rely on this technology if you really want to make sure it's, it, it is working. Now, of course, this technology does exist since a while, but the new thing is that with 5G coming, it is possible for men, from a design perspective, to scale down this complexity to the needs of an industry, like an airport, like a port, like a railway station, like an industry plant. And on top of that, a lot of governments have decided to help their industry to introduce this technology to their operations so that they have also reserved certain spectrum for enterprises to apply for relatively low cost compared to what service provider had to pay for spectrum so that they have their own spectrum, they build their own network on it, and they are from now on their own service provider. They can rule out what happens in this network and they are not just a client of a network of someone else. That's the that's the whole difference behind. And frankly, everywhere this is introduced, the first reaction we have from the users is a wow. Wow, I have coverage wherever I go. Not even talk about additional functionalities or more bandwidth. It is starting by the basics. I have coverage wherever I go because this is not granted today. Yeah. Yeah, excellent, Thomas. Um, so, so let me expand a little bit. Uh, uh, apart from the wow factor, it, there's, it, there's another wow factor. Actually, if they see how many sites we actually need to cover a complete airport, uh, where, for instance, Wi-Fi would need hundreds of uh, of, of access points to uh, to complete to completely cover the whole airfield, we probably need one. Um, which is completely different. It's a different business case, right, uh, for uh, for an airport. Um, so, so I think that's important. The other important aspect is, uh, yes, we're comparing here um, the private wireless solution with Wi-Fi and with public uh, mobile services. But let's not forget that um, uh, we are a true believer that Wi-Fi and public services at the airport are extremely important next to private wireless. There is only one difference uh, in in the thought process that we have with uh, with the current um, current operations, is that we believe Wi-Fi and public mobile services should be directed to the passengers to give them the best connectivity experience they can have at the airport, and we have a dedicated network, pr private wireless for operations. That's the 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 um, uh, uh, the thought process that um, that we also explain to airports how they need to do it right. They can free up the capacity that they uh, that they currently use in Wi-Fi uh, for operations. They direct everything to the passenger, right? So that that is another benefit that uh, where where actually passengers can benefit from uh, from private wireless as well because they get more capacity, etc. Right? So. Uh, very important, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's yeah. why we introduced these two user groups, just in the understanding that these require they have different requirements. But both of them, of course, have all rights to say I need connectivity, just for different reasons and with different requirements. Okay.
Thank you so much. That was a really in-depth um, um, kind of explanation. So thank you. Um, if you could now run through just some of the, the use cases that, that we're seeing with this kind of technology. Yeah, look, what the idea of private wireless is, um, is about, this is about introducing broadband. So why this is so special? Because today there is no broadband uh, under control at the airport yeah, in, their, in their own network. What they have are mm, several different silo-like narrowband outaged wireless systems that are serving maybe one use case each, which only allows, if any, a voice communication, but it's far away from anything that we are used to use as a private person. Now, this is solved by this technology, and, and based on this, use cases are coming like just simply providing the people that are working at the ramp around the aircraft and it stands outside at the, at, at, um, at the ramp or at the apron uh, with much more information. Today, when they need an information, what they, are, what they need to do is they grab their walkie-talkie, they try to find someone, they talk to the, to the office, to the APOC, to the weight and balance agents, they are called, from time to time, uh, give me an information. And then this person needs to stand up and read it from the screen and then bring it back by voice. All this is, of course, it works, yes. I mean, today it works, but we can do better by giving all this information direct in the hands of the RAMP agent. And this is not only voice, it is also text, it is video, it is any kind of multimedia service, so that this person can stay outside working on, on, on the aircraft the whole shift. He doesn't have to go back. He, even when he has at the end to close down the aircraft, let it go, let it leave from off, we call this off blocks, let it leave uh, uh, for starting his flight and all the paperwork has to be done. Even this, he it's not a reason to go back to the office yeah, and, and just go there and bring a staple of paper and take some new staple of paper to go back where we, where we where he's coming from. This can be solved. Also, the other direction, is um, of course very much benefiting uh, from it because if you are sitting as a dispatcher in the APOC, you live with what people are reporting to you by voice, just as I explained. In addition, you have some cameras telling you what is happening, but of course you are, would be in need of much more information. You can have more cameras, you can have sensors, and this helps you taking better decisions because it is like as if you were there. Even cameras that he can control from his, uh, from his desk pan, zoom, tilt, to go everywhere with his camera where he wants to. Um, this is all possible over this network. It's not possible today. So to have marshalers equipped with this equipment, meaning that they can act like a mobile APOC, is not really something special. Every airport that had introduced this technology, was this was one of the first use cases. To yeah. have more cameras, an extension to what we discussed earlier, you can have cameras connected at places where you ever had the need for, but you could not afford the cost to get it connected. Um, further on, you can even dream of more things like automated driving. A, a airport is a busy place. Yes, I know that most of the airport people will, will just roll their eyes saying, oh my God, please not. But it is coming over time. Yeah? Uh, cargo is under under heavy pressure in these days, so a lot of things are done based on cargo volumes. Scanning is one of the major, major use cases uh, which are uh, a part of the whole cargo process. <clears throat> Today we know that the poor guys, they have to, if they, if they go inside uh, the fuselage of the aircraft, they lose the network. So they have to do their scanning, then go back with, and try to find the network and then continue. All these use cases um, are benefiting from these kind of technologies and much more to come, right? Yeah. Maybe you have some other ideas. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me add. Uh, so, so, so to complement a little bit on the situational awareness thing that you just mentioned to uh, to add cameras and so forth, I think it's important to note that uh, Nokia has been involved with uh, with airports where we actually install pen tilt zoom or car pen tilt zoom cameras on top of a car. So the uh, once there's an incident uh, that needs to be resolved, um, uh, the airport operations center will dispatch the car. And uh, which will actually drive to the scene, um, and, and the camera on top of the car is completely controlled by the operation, uh, the airport operations center, right? So the, all of a sudden, in addition to the push-to-talk storm that they get uh, of the incident, they have eyes on the scene as well. 
i.e. they can do better decision making. Uh, the, one of the other use cases I, th I think is really important to, uh, to stress on is, uh, is really uh, what I mentioned at the very beginning and what is referred to within Nokia as what we call cut the wire. Um, there is um, there there is a there's a quick win around this use case to shave off lots of costs at the very uh, a, a, already right now when when you start implementing private wireless, all of a sudden you you don't have the hassle of fibers and and CADEX and what have you you can you can start connecting sensors, um, um, you, and, and whatever you want uh, over the private wireless network. Very concretely, we know that a lot of companies today are involved with what they call uh, ramp uh, artificial intelligence. In order to do so, um, and, and for the software to to actually do the uh, the ramp AI, they need cameras, and those cameras need to be connected. Well, typically, those cameras that are connected to the terminal have a CAD X connection or fiber connection. Maybe at the rooftop is a bit of an issue, but typically at the at, at the uh, at at the terminal, it's not such a such a problem. However, at the remote apron, there is no fiber. There is no CADEX, so the airport would actually miss out on um, uh, on implementing ramp AI at, at, at the remote aprons. So it, private wireless again would be able to overcome that challenge and um, and easily connect those cameras to the um, 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 uh, to the campus network of uh, of the airport. Just as an add-on of uh, what Thomas was saying. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice example. Huh? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, there was some very interesting uh, and concrete examples that you both shared just there. So thank you. Um, what I'd like to know now are what what are the challenges um, airports are facing when it comes to digitalizing their airport operations? Yeah, it's exactly there, right? It's just we are in the, in in the center of it with all what we don't have just discussed. It is about connectivity. If you want to digitalize your your processes, it 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 there is simply a must behind it that you are connecting all the things that are part of these processes. Because then, when you are when 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 you have them talking to each other, you can start to improve. They are giving their data. You are aware of what this asset is doing. Be it a human being, be it just an asset or a car like asset or anything else, it all starts with a um, a universal network. Again, I use the word again with, with, with caution, but that's really in our heart. Connectivity is the foundation of the digitalization. It is not all, but without connectivity, all the rest will not work because you need to rely on this. And maybe um, we have thought for too long that this is all commodity. But now it comes back to us that we need to take care about it at an airport space. Um, I'm old enough to know that there was even a time without a mobile phone. If I talk like this to my son, he doesn't know what I'm talking about, but I do know how this was. Now today, this is just for granted. It's like electrical power. <clears throat> you don't challenge that it does exist. Now, the same was a bit with all um, other parts of connectivity. And um, as we feel as a private person, this also was continued in the business um, at the business place. Now, today, industries like airports understand that connectivity it can rely on is as important to them, like the clearance of their runway. Because if your connectivity systems are going down, you can stop airport operations. There is no way to do it. Maybe exceptional here and there, but of course you're not longer safe. So let's be safe on this. Let's make sure that you can rely on it and then build on this with your digitalization journey. Introduce apps. We have some, yes, as Nokia, but we are the networking guys, right? We are we are building the foundation, which can be wireless or wireline, but there is a lot more that does count on the existence of a reliable um, connectivity stack which the CIO will know perfectly and uh, will, have them, will have them to be built on top of this. This is, I think, the most crucial thing that airports have to take a strategic decision on. It's maybe not starting with only one use case. You need to start somewhere, but um, it is, as I said, it is a strategic decision for the airport. Will I go this route or not? Yeah, absolutely. So, so to me, it's all about indeed, I mean, on one hand, you have the application, that is required for digitization. But typically applications need to communicate with backend systems with the cloud, right? 
if 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 that fails, it's going to be the weakest link, and that's exactly what was Thomas was highlighting upon, right? So it, it is pivotal for airports to think about the connectivity when they start introducing applications to the airport for operations. And it's not only the airport, because I mean, let's face it, I mean, the biggest client of the airport is the carrier. And they have their um, they have their operational processes as well. Think about line maintenance. When this person this person will come every turn around, right, uh, to check upon the aircraft, and he will have his tablet with him. Um, now we know that not every aircraft manufacturer has the handbook available offline. Sometimes you need to connect to the cloud, right? So if you don't have a connection and you need to actually use the handbook. Uh, the manual of the aircraft manufacturer. How are you going to do that? So, uh, so just a concrete example. We may have a uh, the tablet may have a beautiful application, but if the if the connectivity fails, it wouldn't work, right? And we know that um, for a fact that it is sometimes a really big hassle for um, for devices to get connected securely over a either a public network or a Wi-Fi network. So th that is exactly where where the challenge comes from. And, and it, we, we're here to overcome that challenge with a private wireless network. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it sounds like you know um, airports challenges very well. Um, but so any airport that's listening right now, they might be wondering what is um, a quick win that I can make right now. Um, so Thomas, any any kind of words of wisdom in that respect? Sure, sure. We all love these quick wins because they are convincing um, everyone so easy. And I think all the CIOs, they will have a lot of cases on their desk, which today they cannot solve. And that's typically not a technical challenge. It is also a challenge of finding the money for it. It can be a remote stand. It can be across the runway, as we discussed. It can be um, a connectivity issue on a, at a remote place or a blind spot in the surveillance of his, um, of his fence somewhere. So not all of this will be you will be able to read in the press, but um, he knows about it. And once he is going there, this one he can immediately solve. And we invite the CIOs also to talk to us, share it with us, because we might know a bit from experience by talking to other airports. We are also a bit of a platform where a lot of airports are sharing their problems with us. So we might find an idea where he immediately can go for this. So these are tactical use cases that you can solve very easily just as an example um for what how it happened in in brussels at COVID times out of a sudden there was that challenge to go for uh, medical test centers at the airport so uh, it was not that big deal to get containers and put medical stuff inside for doing the testing but where to get the it connectivity because this is a must you need to connect these containers to uh, their servers uh, via the cloud. Typically, this is a project for weeks, if not months, um, to get a fiber connected to this um, airport. And then, fortunately, the airport said, well, was it not that we just started operating this private wireless system? Why not using this? And they went to us, to our partner that is helping them, and it was done. When was it? It was within hours, we've been told. No, within right? a day. Within a day. Within a day. Uh, yeah. It, it, so, it is. It was remarkable. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you so, compare that to yeah. the existing situation. So if you said quick equal to tactical, there are a lot of things that you can do because now you have a network ready that can help you under these um, situ this situations. And then you have, of course, the more longer things where you need to also understand this is a part of a larger process trans uh, transformation in parts of, of operations. But don't underestimate the creativity of the people when you supply them with um, this technology. They start to challenge the way they work. They look at how they have to work today. They understand that this is not smart enough and they kept, could do better. And then they come back to their bosses saying, hey, why am I supposed to do this? Yeah? There are all of us, Richard and I, we constantly, we get these kind of ideas when 
when being at conferences, there was once a young ramp agent uh, in the US meeting me. They are saying, Thomas, you are Nokia. Tell me one thing. I'm a ramp agent in the third generation. My dad was a ramp agent. My grandpa was a ramp agent. Why am, why am I supposed to use the same technology like they had to use? And I said, well, let's have a conversation. Yeah. And then the guy was completely convinced that he can do magical things in his working environment. Other than, of course, we are only a contributor here. So quick does mean either it is already identified, you just missed the solution. Quick could also be that parts of organization are just waiting for this, for to go for a process improvement endeavor. Um, a lot of things like this. It typically is less effort to spend, more information, better decision taking and bringing down the cost. Some of this, or at, one, at least one of this, you always find. Yeah. Great. Well, just to finish up then, it'd be um, fantastic to, to get some some top tips um, from you, uh, just for airports out there who are listening, just where, where should they start? How do they get started? And yeah, it would just be great to hear some 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 kind of words of other words of wisdom from you uh, in terms of tips, just to finish off. Yeah, maybe besides out of experience from the project that we have seen so far, uh, besides these technical quick wins that we just left in the discussion. Um, to try to ask us for, and we would be very happy to do, by the way, for a proof of concept that we can bring this technology at your site, let the people work for it, work with it, and get them, provide them with the first feeling so that they are also not afraid of it. Also your own IT people. People think that, okay, that's not for me, that's for service provider, that's too complex. It is not. And people will see when they see also how small, how handy this technology is. And then look in your organization and find a team or a part of a department where you start with, because then you can have people that you can get trained and they also are able then to, um, to compare this with what they have today and then test it out and go and, and, and expand from there. And then what you will see typically is this is a bit um, self-developing in the marketing at the airport, because before you know, people are aware that there is a new mobile service existing at the airport. And then it, it's not the first time we hear that CIOs are getting contacted. Hey, I heard about there is a new mobile service available. Can I have it? Because it is spread it around by the people talking about that technology, how much better it is as anything they had compared before. But don't try, as we say, to boil the ocean, try to go in steps and have a phasing. Start from somewhere, maybe where the where, where you have the most of the problems with, and then expand from there. Yeah. Yeah. Tip. So if I can expand. So the typically what we do is we, we talk to CIOs and 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 to actually understand their immediate challenges. And, and these are probably limited to two or three major cases um, that are super relevant to the airport to, to get solved. Um, so we need so to, so that is probably one of the uh, first discussions that we have with airports one or uh, in the first or second meeting. Uh, th they are important to the CIO, but they are probably also super important to the board of directors as well, right? Um, so basically we address those challenges in a uh, proof of concept uh, or something around that. Um, and typically what we do is that we um, we start fairly simple uh, with the airport. Uh, most of the most of the challenges, certainly the operational challenges are at airsite. Um, so what we do is we 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 have a very simple build out for the airport, um, maybe one site, maybe two, um, where we actually create a solution to tackle those challenges for the airport that makes sense to the CIO. But more important, it makes sense to the board of directors to actually start investing in such technology and build the foundation for airport 4.0. So these two or three use cases should be instrumental to actually build the case, the strategic case for private wireless. That's typically what we do uh, once we start uh, once we start discussions with uh, with airports. Uh, Richard, Thomas, that was my final question. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Thank you. Thank you. Fun.
Thank you for the questions. Yeah.